Hello everybody. Welcome to Learn the Cat Stretch, Session 1 with Cheryl, Mind Body Movement. Lie down with your legs outstretched. They can be bent if that's more comfortable for you. Just make sure that you're starting from a position of comfort. We'll begin with a soma scan. During a soma scan, we sense which part of ourselves are in contact with the floor and which parts are lifted away. Why are there parts of us lifted away? Is it possible to soften more towards the surface during the session and even now as you think about it? Let's begin at the heels. Notice where the pressure is in the heels. Is it the same on the left and the right? Or does one foot feel more turned in or turned out than the other? Switch from left to right, noticing. Let's now notice the pressure around the lower leg. Where does it begin? How wide is it? Is it the same left to right? And how about at the back of the thighs? Are they in contact or not? Just notice. We're going to move the hips a little and notice if it changes what we can sense at the back of the legs. I want you to imagine you have a Malteser between your belly button and your pubic bone and you're going to roll it up towards your chest and then you're going to roll it down towards your toes. So the hips will be rocking towards the face and away from the face. As you do this, just notice whether the thighs come into contact with the surface or not. When the Malteser is rolling away and the pelvis is rolling away from you, what is the contact of the thighs? And when the pelvis is rolling towards your face, now what do you feel? And now relax. Now sense your left leg and your right leg as a whole. Do they feel similar? Or does one leg feel longer, more in contact? And if so, don't worry about it. That just gives you a picture of how your nervous system is holding you today. And that can change. Now take your awareness to the back of the pelvis. Where do you feel the contact? Is it the same from left to right? And if you felt that one leg was more in contact with the ground than the other, is it the same in the pelvis? Is that same side more in contact or not? Just notice without any judgment or worry. Okay, now let's sense the waist. You're going to place your hands or slide your hands underneath your waist, but without lifting your back to accommodate your hands. So now have your hands, palms down near your waist, slide them under. And what we're doing is feeling and sensing the space around the waist. You take your hands towards the ribs and then down towards the hips. Do you have a similar amount of space and movement for your hand on both sides or is there more space on one side can your hand move more freely what if you make a fist with your hand does one side allow you to make a fist more easily because there's more space just notice and now move your hands away place them where they're comfortable Let's now notice the spine. So start at the tailbone and we'll journey up the spine. Notice the contact of the spine with the surface through the back of the pelvis from the tailbone. And then around the low back, maybe you'll feel the spine lift away. Maybe you won't, doesn't matter. Don't worry. Then can you sense the spine towards the lower ribs at the back? 
and then moving up to the upper back. Can you feel a, a difference in the amount of pressure on the spine? And then moving up to the neck. Does the neck feel relaxed? Or is it maybe, is it a little bit arched? Just notice. Let's return to the shoulder blades. Can you feel the backs of the shoulders, the shoulder blades firmly in contact with the surface? Are they slightly lifted away? Is one shoulder blade drawn upwards a little bit more than the other side? Just notice. Now go to the tops of the shoulders. Does one shoulder feel nearer to the ear than the other? Does one shoulder feel nearer to the ceiling than the other? How about the backs of the arms? Are they in contact? And notice what you've done with your arms. Are you lying palm down, palms up? If you're lying palms up, is it comfortable or have you deliberately turned your hands up without thinking about comfort? Just notice. Are your arms rolled in? Have you placed them on your body? And now notice the skull bone. Where is the skull bone in contact? Is it towards the nape of the neck with the chin slightly drawn down? Or is it towards the crown with the chin slightly drawn up? Let's roll your head very gently from left to right as if saying no in slow motion and see how far you can go comfortably to each side with no force no strain is it the same on both sides can you move more freely to one side okay let's look at the whole image of the body imagine if you were lying in wet sand and you were magically whisked away from the surface and you could see the impression of your body in the sand, what would it look like? Where would the deepest depressions be? Would that impression be equal on both sides? And finally, before we move into our first movement, notice your mood and how you're feeling. Now let's do our first movement, arch and flatten. We're going to motor plan this movement. So that means listening to a description and resisting the temptation to move. So what we're going to do is breathe in and gently arch the back. And then as you breathe out, you're going to let go of the back and allow it to float down to neutral. Let's go ahead and do that movement. Take a breath in as you lift the back, arching the back, lifting the belly button. And then as you breathe out, can you slowly, smoothly and evenly lower down to neutral and now completely relax. So there you have your first pandiculation, three stages in a pan pandiculation. First is the slow contraction. So that's contracting the back muscles to lift up. Second is the slow release. And third is the um, direction to melt, relax, completely, completely let go and become a dead weight. Let's do that again. Take a breath in, arch the back. Can you notice the tightening at the back? Can you let go at the front? And then as you exhale, the back floats down to neutral and then you completely relax. Brain is the dimmer switch, your muscles are the lights. Just wait until all of the lights have switched off in your back muscles and there's no more activity. 
Okay, we're going to do the opposite movement now. We're going to do the flatten. So I'll motor plan it for you. You're going to take a breath in. And as you breathe out, you'll sink the back down towards the surface this time. And then as you breathe in again, you'll float back up to neutral. Let's do that movement. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, slowly and gently take your back down towards the surface. And then as you breathe in, allow the back to spring up again and return to neutral. Completely relax. Let's do that one more time. Take a breath in as you breathe out. Sink the back. Feel how the back gets longer. The muscles at the front of the body shorten. And then return to neutral as you breathe in. Let's put those two movements together now. So we're going to arch first and then we're going to come through to neutral and then we're going to flatten. Take a breath in and arch the back. As you exhale, slowly melt the back, drifting down to neutral. Take another breath. As you breathe out, now sink the back. And as you breathe in again, slowly return to neutral. Relax completely now and sense the effects of the movement. Now practice the movement and play with it. Arching the back as you breathe in, returning to neutral, sinking the back as you breathe out and returning to neutral. Make it smooth like a wave. And can you notice what happens in the neck and head. As you inhale and arch, can you feel the back of the neck pulled long? Or does the head not move? The next time you do that movement, soften the neck and allow the neck to move. When the low back moves, something happens in the neck. Give yourself the opportunity to sense. When you sink the back and the neck is pulled downwards, the chin rocks up. Just notice. Keep doing the movement on a continuum like a wave, pelvis rolling and head rolling. When you arch, notice the tightening and shortening at the back of the body and the lengthening at the front. And when you flatten, the opposite happens. The back lengthens and the front of the body shortens. Make the next movement your last one and completely relax. Extend your legs for a moment and just allow your body to sink towards the floor. Sense your back. And now you're going to bend your knees again, feet about hip distance, pelvis relaxed, head relaxed, and arms out to about 45 degrees. We're going to do the flower movement. So to motor plan it for you, it's similar to arch and flatten, but you're going to deliberately involve more of the trunk and you're also going to involve the limbs. 
we'll start with the arms. So motor planning for you here. Your arms are going to roll in towards the body and then outwards. They'll roll inwards as you breathe out and outwards as you breathe in. So now let's let's try that together. Take a breath in to prepare and as you breathe out, roll the arms inwards like two rolling pins towards the body. And then as you breathe in, allow the arms to roll out. As we do this a second time, lead with the little finger. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, roll the arms in, lead with that little finger. How does it change the movement? And then as you breathe in, roll back out to your neutral. The next time, I want you to add a lifting of the shoulders away from the surface. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, little finger leads, arm rolls, shoulder lifts. And then as you breathe in, the arm rolls out and the shoulder rolls away from the trunk. Completely relax. Okay, as you do this the next time, notice what your neck and head do. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, roll the arm in, allow the shoulder to lift, lead with the little finger. Feel the chest tighten. What's your neck doing? And then slowly roll out as you breathe in. What happened to the neck? Did it move? Did the head move? If not, soften this time and see what happens to the movement of your head and neck. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, roll the arm inwards, leading with a little finger. Shoulder lifts. Feel the tightness in the chest. Neck is soft. Can you feel how the chin wants to tuck upwards? The skull is drawn towards the body. And now slowly roll the arm out. Completely relax. Okay, let's do that movement again. And this time you're also going to sink the back. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, arm rolls in, shoulder lifts, chin rocks up and sink the back. As you breathe in, arms and shoulders roll away from the trunk and the back lifts back up to neutral. Completely relax. Okay, now we're going to do rolling away from the body. So again, arms start 45 degrees away from the body in a neutral position. Motor planning. You're going to breathe in and as you breathe in, roll the arms so that the palms open, leading with the thumbs. Let's do that movement. Breathe in as the arm rolls open, thumb leads, the palms come towards the ceiling backs of the hands are down towards the floor and then as you breathe out roll them back in this time i want you to notice the opening of the collarbones and the lifting of the chest take a breath in roll the arms away lead with the thumbs feel the shoulders move away from the trunk allow the collarbones to open Deliberately lift the chest and then as you exhale on your next exhalation, roll back in. So just a word about breathing, basically breathe and keep breathing. I may ask you to initiate a movement on an exhale or an inhale, but keep breathing. OK, this next time you're going to allow your pelvis to roll away so that the whole back is arched. Let's do that together. Take a breath in and as you breathe out, roll the arms away, lead with the thumbs, chest lifts and pelvis rolls away from the body so the entire back is arched. Stay in that position, just keep breathing. Notice the openness at the front of the body. And now on your next out breath, you're going to allow yourself to return to neutral. 
We're going to do that one more time and I want you to notice the movement of the head and neck. As the shoulders roll away, the neck extends. So you're elongating the neck slightly away from the body. And you may find that the skull moves away from the body and the chin might want to lift slightly. Just notice. So from that neutral position, breathe in, thumbs lead, arms roll away, shoulders move away from the trunk. Can you feel the neck extend away from the body? Pelvis rolls away from the body, the whole back is arched, front of the body is open. And on your next exhalation, return to neutral. So let's put those two movement halves together. A motor plan for you. Take a breath in to, repair, uh, to prepare. And as you breathe out, you'll roll inwards, sink the back and chest. And as you breathe in, you'll roll outwards, allow the back to arch, the arms to open, the chest to open. So it's like a flower at night time, how a flower curls in on itself, the petals curl in on itself. And then in the daytime, it opens back out to the sun. Let's do that movement together. Take a breath in and as you breathe out, roll in, lead with the little finger, arms roll in, chest sinks, chin rocks up. And when you're ready, on your next in breath, initiate the movement with the thumbs, roll the arms outwards, just keep breathing now. Allow the neck to extend, allow the pelvis to roll away and then slowly return to neutral and completely relax. Let's do that one more time together. We'll start with the flower closing. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, arms roll in, chest sinks, neck is pulled, chin rocks up, back sinks. Stay there, keep breathing. Notice the tightness and shortness at the front of your body. And can you also notice the length at the back of your body? Can you allow some more relaxation and length at the back of your body? And then when you're ready, slowly roll out the arms and return to neutral. Now let's get ready to open. So as you take a breath in, roll the thumbs outwards, turn the palms, allow the shoulders to move away from the trunk. Chest opens and arches, neck extends away from the body, pelvis rolls away from the body. Keep breathing. Stay in this open position. Can you notice how the front of your body is long and lengthened? The back is contracted. Can you allow even more softness, length and opening at the front? And then slowly return to neutral. Completely relax. We're going to add one more part to the movement. Motor planning. So recall how you roll the arms inwards. We're going to do a similar thing with the legs. So the knees will come together as the arms roll inwards. And then as you open and roll the arms away, allow the knees to move away from each other and you'll take your weight onto the outside edge of the foot so the soles of the feet come to look at each other and the knees roll away. And then you're gonna return the knees back to neutral. Let's go ahead and do that whole movement, we're going to roll in first. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, roll the arms in, knees together, back down, allow the chin to move. And when you're ready on your next in breath, roll the arms outwards, allow the knees to move apart, allow the back to arch, allow the front of you to elongate, neck to extend away from the body and then slowly return to neutral.
completely relax. Notice the effects of that movement. Now play with that movement by yourself. Take as many breaths as is comfortable to move into the full closed flower and take as many breaths as you need to move into the full expression of the open flower. Begin with your arms at 45 degrees, begin with your knees about hip distance apart and in your own time now, to the pace of your own breath. Roll everything inwards, arms, knees, the back sinks, the chin rocks up. And when you're ready, open, leading with the thumbs, arms, roll away from the body, shoulders widen, chest widens, back arches, front of the body gets long. Can you make the movement smooth and even like a wave? What is the Goldilocks level of movement for you today? What feels just right? Is there a part of the movement that as you're playing may have felt a little bit of a strain? As you repeat that movement, can you refrain from going into that territory that caused a little strain? What can you do to make this movement more pleasurable? Does it feel nice to stay in the open part of the movement and send full generous breaths down into your body? Make the next movement your last one. And completely relax. Extend the legs again. Soften into the surface. Just notice the contact of your body against the surface. Our next movement is the back lift. So you need to roll over onto your front. Take your time. Roll over with the least possible effort onto your front. We're going to begin with the head turned to the left. The left arm is bent at the elbow, fingers towards the forehead as if saluting. So the elbow will be level with the shoulder, fingers level with the forehead. The right arm is down by your side. So a note about comfort. Being in this position with the neck turned can feel uncomfortable for some people. If it is uncomfortable for you, then have your face turned downwards. And so you don't squash your nose. Please put some sort of um, padding under the forehead. If you're trying to do it without padding, then what you'll do is actually um, tense your neck away from the floor. So it's better to use padding because then you can fully relax the weight of the head against the padding and not squash your nose and not have your neck turned too much to the side if it's uncomfortable. Okay, so from that starting position then I'm going to motor plan it for you. Leave the palm down, but you're going to float the elbow up to the ceiling as you breathe in and then float the elbow down as you breathe out. Let's do that together. Take a breath in, 
the elbow floats up to the ceiling as if there's a string attached to the elbow and you're being pulled like a marionette. And then slowly allow the elbow to come back down to the surface. Imagine it's floating down. It touches the surface, but you're still releasing, still releasing. Brain is the dimmer switch, muscles are the lights. Wait until the end of the movement, watch it, and then completely relax and notice any feedback, any sensations there. Make sure your head is fully relaxed into the surface. Hips relaxed, shoulders relaxed. Everything switched off. Let's do that movement one more time. As you breathe in, the shoulder as the elbow lifts towards the ceiling. And as you breathe out, the elbow floats back down and you completely relax at the end. It might feel a little juddery, it might feel a little shaky. That's perfectly normal. Actually, let's do it one more time and see if you can slow down and make any shakiness or judderiness smoother. That's when your brain is becoming more in control of the movement. Go ahead, breathe in, the elbow lifts. As you breathe out, the elbow floats back down. Now, when it comes to a point that's juddery, lift it back up towards the ceiling and then see if you can smooth through that juddery part and slowly come down to the surface, completely relax. Okay, we're going to now raise the head and chest away from the surface. We're going to do this on an in-breath. Now, a caution here, please try to avoid breathing in and holding your breath and then moving. Okay, so let's do the movement together. Take a breath in as you float up the head and chest and now slowly release back down. Completely relax against the surface. So it's not wrong or dangerous to breathe in and hold the breath and do the movement, but that's not the movement we're doing today. So just notice if that's what you wanted to do. Once again, synchronizing the breath and the movement. As you breathe in, float the head and chest. Turn the head as if to look over the shoulder and then slowly come down. Completely relax. How did it feel to turn the head? If it felt awkward, then imagine turning the head, but keep your head in a comfortable position. Let's do that again. Take a breath in as you float up the head and chest and go as if to turn the head and look over the shoulder. No strain. Slowly return. Completely relax. Now we're going to put the movement of the elbow and the head together. So those fingers that are against your forehead like a salute can now kind of slip under the forehead or if it's easier under the cheek. Motor planning. As you breathe in, you will lift the elbow, hand and head together and chest in one movement and then slowly release. So it's as if that hand underneath the forehead or underneath the right cheek is helping to lift the head and act as a bit of a paddle, pushing the head upwards and away from the body so that the underside of the body is lengthened. Let's go ahead and try that movement. So hand underneath the forehead or cheek, whichever is comfortable for you. As you breathe in, lift the elbow, hand, head, chest, 
go to look over the shoulder if it's comfortable and slowly return to neutral. How did it feel? Do it one more time, but I want you to notice what happens in the right leg, lower back and buttock. So it's the opposite side of the elbow that you're lifting. So as you breathe in, lift the elbow, hand, head, chest. Now notice that opposite buttock. Can you feel a tightness there? And now slowly release. Releasing the tension from the shoulder, the spine, but also from that opposite buttock, lower back and leg. So the action of the opposite leg and buttock is counterbalancing you. So it's just your brain organising the movement for you. But what's good is to know that that's going on and be able to voluntarily and deliberately release the tension from that side. So we're going to involve that right leg in the movement this time. The right, this is motor planning, the right leg will lengthen away from the body first and then lift along with the elbow and head. And then slowly come down and you'll completely relax. Let's do that movement together. So we're lifting the left elbow and the right leg. As you breathe in, elbow, head, chest and opposite leg lift. The leg extends first and now slowly return to neutral. Completely relax. Can you do this movement lightly? As if your head, your leg, your elbow weigh nothing. Go ahead, breathe in, lift the elbow, head, opposite leg. Feel the length from the left shoulder to the right hip, from the chin to the chest. And now slowly come down, completely relax. Do this movement a couple of times now yourself experimenting with the greatest amount of comfort you can experience. So what can make it more comfortable? Possibly less range? Possibly thinking about more length in the leg? More length from the left shoulder to the opposite hip? Greater softening of the underside of your body as you are in the extended position. Maybe a resting breath at the top of the position. Oh. Now we're going to do one more movement and this time you're going to make it a uh, half as big as you have been doing. So you're going to take a breath in and come up but only a little and then release from that place and completely relax. Let's do half as much again. Release and completely relax. Now place the right hand level with your left hand and turn the head to face the opposite side. So we're going to repeat the movement on the right side. Again, notice the level of comfort in your neck. Perhaps you didn't need padding or cushioning. Perhaps it was OK to turn your head to the left, but to the right it feels tight. Just notice. Or maybe it feels more comfortable on this side. So you can begin either face downwards towards the surface, but make sure that you, your head is padded so that you can fully give the weight of your head to the surface and you're not holding tension in your neck. The right arm is bent at the elbow, elbow level with the shoulder, fingertips towards the forehead like a salute. 
left arm relaxed by the side. Okay, so we know the movement on this side. We're going to lift the elbow twice, lift the head twice, and lift the leg twice in isolation, and then piece the whole of the movement together. Let's start with the elbow. As you take a breath in, float the elbow towards the ceiling, opening the chest, and slowly come down and completely relax. Repeat that movement, breathing in, elbow lifts, feel the space under the right chest. Slowly lower. If you come to any juddery parts, stop, move back, and then slowly come through, seeing if you can smooth the movement out. Brain is the dimmer switch. Muscles are the lights. Let the lights completely fade off and notice the sensations. Now let's lift the head. So let the arm just relax and stay where it is. We're going to lift the head and chest. Remember you can turn the head as if to look over the shoulder, but only go um, as far as comfort allows. Breathe in as you float the head and chest. It's like you lengthen away from your belly button. You might feel the weight move into your pelvis. The head goes to turn to look over the shoulder and then you return down to the surface. Repeat that movement, making it as light as possible, feeling length at the front of the body. Slowly lower, making it smooth. Let it fade off, completely relax. Now let's connect the right hand and the face. So you can have the hand at the forehead or if you're able to turn your head to the right, maybe under your left cheek. On your next in-breath, Lift the elbow, cheek, head, hand and chest, feeling the length underneath and slowly return, smoothing out the movement. Completely relax. On your next repetition, notice what your left leg and left buttock do. As you breathe in and lift, Notice that counterbalancing action of the left leg. It wants to tighten. And now slowly release. Let's just move the left leg by itself. You're going to extend the leg first and then lift. When you're ready, take a breath in as you extend your toes away from your body and then lift with a straight leg and slowly lower, completely relaxing. As the foot comes towards the surface, you're still releasing, still releasing. Allow the heel to roll out to the side of the body or out to the side, sorry. And as that happens, feel the letting go that happens around the buttocks. Let's do that movement once more. As you take a breath in, extend the leg and lift. What does it feel like to roll the heel inwards? And now slowly release, straight leg, come towards the ground and let the heel roll out. Let's connect the upper body with the opposite side of the lower body. So take a breath in. Lift the elbow, head on the right, and the leg on the left. Feel the openness across the front of the body. Completely relax, smoothly coming down.
Now play with this movement a couple of times by yourself. Take as many breath cycles as you need to come up to the full extension. And your full extension might only be quite a small movement. So there's no need to make this into a, a large movement. It may feel uncomfortable for you. So go only where comfort allows. It may feel like a minuscule millimeter that you're lifting away from the surface. For some people, you might be lifting a foot. Just honor what your body can do today. As you lift up into the extended position, just stay there and pause and take a breath, softening the underside of your body, feeling the length from your left toes to your left elbow, uh, to your right elbow, and up to the neck and chin. And as you come down, can you control the movement? Can you synchronize the elbow, head and foot coming down together, touching down together, releasing out together? Make your next movement your last one. Completely relax. Soften the head into the surface. Allow the shoulders to soften. Allow the belly to soften. Allow the pelvis to soften, the knees and the feet. And taking your time, roll onto your back. Just take a few moments of integration Sensing the contact between your body and the surface after doing that movement. Bend your knees. And just recall for yourself the arch and flatten movement. And can you do a couple of arch and flatten movements before we move on to our last movement today which is the side bend so just take a moment now on your back with your knees bent arching the back as you breathe in breathing out and letting go and then as you take your next breath breathe out and sink the back and then allow it to return to neutral do that movement a couple of times softening the back muscles. And now completely relax. You're going to roll onto your left side. So the left side down towards the floor, the right side uppermost. If you're on a yoga mat, use the side of your yoga mat to um, place your shoulders and your hips in alignment. Your knees are bent at 90 degrees, so it's like you're sitting in a straight back chair. Have your ears over your shoulder. The bottom hand can be underneath your head, keeping your head a neck level with your spine, or you may prefer a cushion or pillow for comfort. So just take a moment to get yourself comfortable. Make sure that your knees are level with your pelvis and that your feet are level with your knees. The top arm is resting on the side of the body. I'm going to describe the movement for you. We're going to begin by lifting the head and lifting the ribs and taking the lower ribs towards the waist. 
and then slowly coming down. The movement is, is as if you, you are between two panes of glass. So there's no rotation forwards or rotation back. So let me just describe that again for you. The head will lift, the ribs will lift, and the ribs will come towards the hips, shortening the waist. And then you'll slowly lower down and completely relax. Let's do that together. Take a breath in to prepare. And as you breathe out, lift the head, slide the ribs towards the hips. As you breathe in, unslide the ribs and allow the head and neck and ribs to come down and completely relax. How did that feel on your neck? If it felt uncomfortable at all, just make sure that your head can rest in comfort on the pillow and you can just slide the ribs down. Let's try that again. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, slide the ribs towards the hips. The head can lift if you want to and slowly come down. Go only as far as other body parts allow you to. So if your ribs are fine, but your head doesn't want to move, honour what your head wants to do. So another possibility is to take the right arm and drape the hand over the head so that the fingers are on the underside of your head. And then that hand can be used to lift the head and then lower the head. If that feels too much, keep your arm on the top side of your body. These are just options. Let's do that movement again. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, the ribs slide down towards the hips, the waist shortens, head lifts if it wants to. Hand can lift the head, or the hand can reach towards your feet. Slowly return. Feel like you're getting taller as you come down. The ribs move away from the hips and the neck lengthens and you completely relax. Now we're going to do a movement for the lower part of the body. So the upper part of the body can completely relax. You're going to take the hips towards the ribs this time, shortening the waist from the opposite end of the trunk, as it were. So take a breath in. As you breathe out, slide the hips towards the ribs, shortening the waist, a small movement. And then as you breathe in, slowly, smoothly, evenly, Allow the hips to move away from the ribs and completely relax, soften the hips. Now let's add lifting the foot so the knees will stay together. So it's as if your knees are glued together, but your hip will slide towards your ribs and your top foot will lift. Just notice the difference that makes. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, the hip slides to the ribs, the top foot lifts, the knees stay together. And slowly return, can you synchronize the foot and the hip returning to neutral? Brain is the dimmer switch, muscles are the lights. Watch the lights fade off completely and then melt, drop, relax. Let's put the movement of the upper body together with the lower body. So get a picture of it in your mind first. This is motor planning. The head and foot lift. The ribs and hips come towards each other. The waist shortens like playing an accordion. And then as you breathe in, ribs and hips move away from each other. 
and the head and the foot come down together. Let's do that movement. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, head, foot, lift, ribs, hips come down towards each other. Waist shortens. Take as many breaths as you need to get there. And then when you are ready, slowly peel the ribs and hips apart, coming down, head comes down and the foot comes down and you completely relax. Let everything go. Let your body become a dead weight. Wipe away all traces of movement. Let's do it one more time together. Take a breath in to prepare. As you breathe out, ribs, hips begin to slide, head and foot lift. Come slowly, smoothly, evenly to the top of your movement. Keep breathing. Stay at the top for a moment. And on your next in-breath, can you let go underneath, on the underside of your body? And then slowly return the head and the foot, the ribs and the hips, feeling yourself elongate. Completely relax. Play with this movement a couple of times taking as many breath cycles as you need. Are you allowing the ribs to rotate forward or backwards? Are the hips rotating forwards or backwards? As you move, imagine yourself, your trunk and your head between two panes of glass. So you have to come directly up and directly towards the centre of your body as you lie on the side. Can you synchronise the upper body and lower body moving away from each other? The waist muscles like pulling toffee. Sense an elongation in the neck and in the lower spine towards the tailbone as the head comes down and the hips and foot come down. Make the next movement your last movement. And then completely relax on your side, softening the feet, the knees, the hips, the waist, the shoulders, the head, neck, eyes, arms. And then roll onto your back, extending out your legs. And sensing for a moment how you feel on the left side of the body and the right side of the body. So it's the right side of the body that you've just been moving and lengthening and shortening. How does it feel? Is there a difference? Is there more space? Now set yourself up to do the side bend on the left side of the body. So you're going to lie down on the right. Remember to have your pillow for comfort. And your setup is with the shoulders over the hips and the head, the ears over the shoulder. The knees are level with the hips. The feet are level with the knees. So your knees are a right angle. What does your top arm want to do? 
does it prefer to be uh, uh, draped along the top side of your body or does it feel comfortable on this side to reach over the head and hold on to the right ear or just just above the right ear just do whatever's comfortable for you so I'm going to imagine as I narrate this first set, um, movement that your arm is draped along the side of your body you're going to take a breath in and as you breathe out the head will lift the ribs will slide down to the hips and the fingertips will reach away from the body imagine you're reaching the wall that your feet are facing the soles of your feet are facing and then slowly return let every part of you return. Leave your hand in this position or take it over your head. Breathe in. As you breathe out, the head lifts, the ribs slide, the waist shortens. You can reach your fingers to the wall if your hand, if your arm is against your body. Or feel like the elbow is lifting towards the ceiling if your hand is reaching over. And now slowly return and completely relax. Let's do that movement one more time. Lift the head, slide the ribs, shorten the waist. Now feel the length on the underside of your body. Can you lengthen it more? And now slowly release. Fibre by fibre, getting taller. Let's move the hip and foot. You're going to take a breath in. As you breathe out, lift the foot, slide the hips, towards the ribs. The knees stay together. And now slowly release. Hip slides away and the foot returns. Completely relax. Breath in. As you breathe out, slide the hip. Lift the foot, feel the waist shorten. As you breathe in, feel the waist lengthen, the hip moves away from the ribs and the foot comes down together with the hip. It's a small movement with the hip, but a bigger movement with the foot. Can you synchronize them? Let's try one more time, just with the lower body. Breath in, as you breathe out, Slide the hip, lift the foot. Waist shortens. As you breathe in to return, the waist lengthens. Hip and foot come down, synchronise the movement. Completely relax. Now let's put the two halves together for a full expression of the side bend. Get the picture in your mind first. The head and the foot lift, the ribs and the hips come together, the waist shortens. And then you slowly return. And it's like you're drawing both halves of your body away from the centre. Let's do that movement together. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, the head lifts, the foot lifts, the ribs and the hips come towards each other, shortening the waist. Keep breathing. On your next in-breath, slowly breathe into the ribs and allow the rib cage to come down, the hips to slide away from the ribs and the head and foot to return. Completely relax. 
What does that top arm want to do? Does it want to reach or would you prefer to have the arm over your head and reach the elbow to the ceiling? It's up to you. Let's move again together. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, the foot lifts, the head lifts, the hips and rib ribs come together, the waist shortens. As you come down, the waist lengthens as the ribs and the hips draw away from each other. Feel the neck lengthen as it comes down and the foot comes to rest on top of the lower foot. Upper body released and lengthened. Or the upper side of your body, I should say. Now play with this movement a couple of times. Try coming to the full expression of the side bend and just staying there and taking a breath. And as you take a breath in, swell your breath into the underside of your body. And come down. Imagine viewing yourself from the back. So the starting position, your spine would be level and straight. And then as you roll and slide the hips and lift the foot and lift the head and lift the ribs, the spine becomes banana shaped. Just have that image in mind and the contraction in the spine on the top side, but yet the lengthening of the spine on the underside of your body. Just take a moment to appreciate that as you come into the full expression of the side bend. Stay there for a moment and swell your breath into that lengthened underside of the spine. And come down. Experiment with doing your biggest movement. And how does it feel to do that? Is it comfortable? And what's the smallest movement you can do? How small can you make the side bend so that a, an onlooker actually wouldn't think you were moving at all, but you know that you're gathering together the muscles as if to lift your head, your foot and slide your hip and ribs, but there's no movement to be seen from an onlooker, but yet you can release. Just play with that. What's your biggest movement? What's your smallest movement? And make your next movement your last one. Relax completely on your side. Let your feet relax, your knees, your hips, your waist. Let your spine completely relax so you're no longer trying to hold it in a straight line. It can sag in the middle where your waist is and just release. Shoulders relax. Top shoulder relaxing. Neck relaxing. Face relaxing, eyes, jaw relaxing. And in your own time, roll over onto your back. Okay, lying on your back, extend your legs. Notice how your side feels, your left side that you've just been moving. Does it feel more even now compared to the right side? Just 
just do the experiment with the hands of placing them underneath your waist. Noticing that space, how far can you slide your hand? Maybe it's less. Could be that more of you is in contact with the surface now. You're going to bend the knees and to finish, you're going to do several movements of the arch and flatten to give your spine a final rolling out. So the knees are hip distance, feet, soles on the floor, arms by your sides, maybe 45 degrees out to the side. And you're going to breathe in and arch the back. As you exhale, come to neutral. And take another breath, sink the back, breathe in and come to neutral. And now put those two movements together, flow them together. So you're rolling through the spine, smooth like a wave, undulating the spine synchronizing your movement with your breath taking as many breaths as you need to arch maybe taking a breath in between the arch and the flatten maybe not maybe try to speed up your arch so you breathe in an arch you Exhale and sink and breathe in, return to neutral and keep flowing with that movement. Or maybe you'll take more breaths. Make your next movement your last one. Now extend your legs. Let's scan the body again. The pressure in the heels, the contact of the calves, the contact of the thighs. Remember your Malteser, roll it towards your feet, roll it towards your chest. Notice if your thighs are in contact. Do your legs feel the same as they did at the beginning? If you had a heavier leg, is it still a heavier leg? If you had a longer leg, is it still a longer leg? Just notice. Back of the pelvis, shoulder blades and waist. Notice that space around the waist. Is there more space between your hips and your ribs? Is there more of you in contact? Maybe there's less. It could be. Just notice how it is for you. Sense your shoulder blades. Sense the shoulders. Is one nearer to the ear? Roll the head from left to right. Slowly rolling on the skull. How far can you go to each side? Is it the same as it was at the beginning of the session? What about the backs of the arms? How are the hands being held? Is it different? What's your final impression of your body? If you were whisked into the air and you could see the impression your body was making on the surface. Is it different from the beginning of the session? And how do you feel? We're going to do a little movement in a moment to kind of wake you up and bring you back. It's easy to sort of drift off into a nice 
um, nice relaxation, but sometimes you've got to get up and get things done. So you can choose to lie down and continue to enjoy being relaxed or you may want to roll onto your side and come to standing in your own time. What's the easiest way you can get from the floor to standing up? And then when you're on your feet, just rub your fingertips into your hair, slap your cheeks, pinch your ears, Massage your face, tap your shoulders and chest, blink your eyes and then begin to bounce on your heels very gently, just a gentle bounce and allow the, um, the impact to go all the way through your body. Can you soften your body so the impact of bouncing on your heels goes all the way through your body. Jiggling all of your organs, shaking your arms, maybe going from leg to leg now, bouncing on alternate heels, allowing your shoulders to move along with what your feet are doing. And then come to stillness. And I wish you a lovely day.